What's up everybody? We are here in Destin, Florida at Henderson Beach State Park. Beautiful place. We got some beach hair, some tan Ooh, beach yeah. vibes going on. It is awesome. It has also been a very, very long time <laughs> since we've done a YouTube video, what, like yeah. over a month. Yeah. We were on a pretty good roll there for a while. So today we are ready to bring you guys a new video. Yeah, so today we are showing you guys five apps that are going to change your life when traveling. Great for on the road, great for flying, all things travel related, check these out. The first app we're gonna be taking a look at is called TripIt. And this app is really amazing because it actually will import any itinerary that it finds within your email if you sync it up and then bring it directly into the app. This is awesome because it takes care of all the heavy lifting for you. So you don't have to go and import things. You don't have to think about what trips you're going on. It automatically does this for you. So if we open the app, you can see I have some trips in here on my past trips. Um, we can click on upcoming and then you can see we have Florida and Savannah, Florida where we are now. And so if I just click on Florida here, what this does is it's showing me we have, we checked in on Sunday for Henderson State Park and then we have another reservation coming up on Thursday. So it automatically imported all of those reservations. So if I click on one of them, I can see it tells me the check-in time, it tells me the check-out time, and then it actually imports the confirmation number. So this is really, really helpful because a lot of times, you know, you are searching through your email, like what's my confirmation number? What site am I at? What's the info for this? What hotel room am, am I in? And if you look at this, it has the lodging info right here. It says site 2810 only. So how awesome is that? It's giving you all of this information right here. So if we go back, we can go to past trips and let's just scroll back to one where I had a bunch of different flights. So here when we were in Cambodia, I can click on this and you can see here that it's showing LAX to China, then our Airbnb, and then all the way through the entire trip. So each time, let's click on a flight. It's showing me when I'm departing from LA, when I'm arriving in China, including the terminal, and usually it will show you the gate as well um, when it's all loaded in. And then it shows you the duration of the flight, confirmation number, and then it even actually lets you go ahead and check in through this app. So you guys, this app has been a lifesaver. I cannot talk enough about this one. All right, the next app we're gonna talk about is called All Trails. It's a hiking app, not much explanation, so let's dive right in. So here on the screen, we have our first interface in All Trails. Uh, we have Yosemite National Park in here. So if you were to enter a city, a park, a trail name, um, that's what would come up. So we have Yosemite in here. You can go through and notice all the different trails ranked from easy, medium to hard. If you click up here in the left-hand corner, you'll notice a pro feature, and this allows you to buy a pro account if you wanted to um, get a little bit more information. So with a pro account, you can download maps. Um, you can pretty much have everything offline. So this is what's included in the free account below. So let's check out the rest of the app. So back here on the screen, you'll notice the map is in the upper right-hand corner. If we click map, this actually shows you the uh, layout of all the trails in Yosemite, clearly a lot. Um, and you can view that from map view and then scroll along the bottom as well. So really, really handy here. So this is obviously showing us Yosemite, but we are not in Yosemite. We are in Destin, Florida. So we are going to search Destin, Florida, and see what comes up. So obviously some easy trails here, not quite like Yosemite. We're in a bit more of like a laid back area, but if you were into hiking, you could still search those here. We have a Henderson Beach Nature Trail, which is right here in the campsite. So if I open that up, you'll notice that you can actually record that trail. You can save it by clicking the heart here and that plans out your uh, your trail. You can get directions to it, open that in Google or Apple Maps, share it. You could do a whole lot with every one of these trails here. And then it gives you the elevation, the length, the route type. So a lot of great information and you can actually review the hike as well. So tons of people have reviewed really popular hikes. This one, not so much. 
So if we were to actually record one of these, it would save into our history. We haven't done any of that yet, so that's why it's empty. But this is where those recordings would actually take place. You would notice the stats, so you can actually track your hikes. Um, similar to a Fitbit, but you'd have it all here in one app. And it's just a really, really cool app that we use when we go hiking in different national parks. On to the next one. All right, so for this next app, we are talking about Road Trippers. And next to TripIt, this is one of my favorite apps. I recently discovered it, and it has been amazing for planning out our trip the past few months. I think without it, we wouldn't know about a lot of really awesome places that we stumbled on, and we also wouldn't be able to kind of map everything out and track the way things are going and see our route, see hours, see mileage. Let's check it out. When we open the app up, you might not have any saved places here like I do, but it should look like this and it might actually give you some suggestions of nearby trips and things that you can explore. But just to go through this interface real quickly, we have trips, places, maps, reviews, all sorts of great things here. And then if we go back to trip, we also down here on the lower bottom bar, we have nearby maps, guides, and profile. So you can see that I have a plus account, which I highly recommend doing because it allows you to save an endless number of trips and add as many points to a trip as you want. First, I wanna show you guys, if I click nearby, this is going to show me everything in the area that I'm in. It shows me I'm here on the beach in Destin, Florida, and it's going to give me the option to look at popular things to do or start a new trip but let's just look at one that I've already set up so you can see how this looks so if we go to profile over here you can see all these trips that I've saved but let's open van trip 2019 so if I click on that it's gonna open up and show all these different places that I've added into the app so these a lot of these places are spots that we wanted to go to and also spots that we kind of have stumbled on upon the way and I'll show you guys exactly what that looks like so you can view it as a huge list like this if you look closely in the corner here of each place you can see how far it is from the spot before and how many miles it is this tends to be pretty accurate. It's a little bit off depending on how far it's actually taking you into a national park or whatever location it is, but it's actually really, really helpful because you can say, okay, how far do I have to drive today? What about tomorrow? And then kind of space everything out proportionally. So if we click down here to load trip on map, you can see that it brings up this awesome map of everywhere that we've been and everywhere that we plan to go. So you can see, you can zoom in and you can check everything out and kind of scroll along your map and see what your route looks like. Like down here, you can see things got a bit crazy. We we're kind of zigzagging all over the place, but that's what makes this app so amazing because you can lay it out, you can see it, and then you can even go in and move things around. So let's say down here, well, actually, no, we wanna to go to Monument Valley before Antelope Canyon. So all I have to do is drag it just like that with my finger and it automatically updates on the map. So now if I go back to map and check out where Horseshoe Bend is, right in here, it's now putting Horseshoe Bend before some of the other spots. So you kind of want to move things around based on the spots that you want to visit, but to be honest, the first thing I do is just load a bunch of things and then start moving everything around. So if you were to actually click on a place, then you can look at the location in detail. So if we click on details, it comes up and you can see, okay, this is a private property. It's telling me that I need to get a tour. So it's giving me a lot of good information. It's showing me reviews and photos. Look at that, so I can see what this place looks like before I visit. By the way, Antelope Canyon's absolutely amazing. Highly recommend it. So you can click on this information, read about it. You can check out if they have parking here, if they have Wi-Fi, they don't have Wi-Fi. Um, and then you can click on the website or call the phone number. So this app is really, really awesome because it's kind of like your trip planner all in one, where it allows you to contact people, check out the website, see reviews, look at photos, everything. Another thing that's absolutely amazing about this app, I really can't say enough about it, is if you want to add more things to your trip but you're not really sure what you want to do or maybe you need to find a place to stay, you can come up here to search and explore and then you can click on all of these little icons here. So let's say I want to go camping and RV, I'm going to click all 
and I need to know where I can camp tonight. So look at that. It's automatically putting all these different campgrounds along the route that I'm driving on and I can click on them and look at reviews, see if this is the place that I wanna stay. And then I can even come up here to these three little dots in the upper right hand corner and I can adjust the distance. So right now it's only five miles from my route, but I can go all the way down here to infinity miles and see every campsite in the US. Check that out. Super awesome. These are all of these spots that you could go to that are kind of associated with the apps. Obviously there's a ton more. This gives you the, a great ability to be able to see places to stay. You could also obviously put in hotels. And then I also love that you can put in things to do. So I just cleared that campsite out. I can put all things to do or I can choose things that might be interesting, maybe offbeat attractions. Let's just go all done and then you can see now it's showing lots of things to do along my route and again you can adjust that distance if you want up here and then you can zoom in and click on them so this is how we found some things that we never would have thought to go to so we have the shed barbecue we went there the other day and it was awesome but you know we wouldn't have known about these places if it wasn't for the app the last part of this app that i want to show you guys is guide so if you click guide down here it gives you all of these awesome guides to kind of get you started. Maybe you're not really sure what you want to do for vacation. Maybe you're not really sure where you want to go, but it shows you classic USA road trips, family road trips, and weird guides, 48 hours to different cities. And you can kind of just scroll through these and pick something that seems interesting to you. So let's just say I'm going to click on this Maholan Drive. And as I scroll down, I find some places that look interesting Interesting. Maybe I decide I want to do the Maholan Drive while we're in LA. You can click it and you can just add it to a trip that you're currently on. So you don't have to actually load these pre-made guides for you. You can add them to your own personal trip. So lots of ways to kind of get creative with this and have some fun with it, but I highly recommend checking it out, playing around, adding some spots, maybe if it's just for a quick weekend trip and have fun with it. The third app we're gonna be talking about is Bring Fido. For all of you pet owners out there, this is super, super helpful when you're staying at hotels and trying to figure out whether they are pet friendly. Sometimes on the website, they don't actually tell you, you give them a call, they say they might be, it's a mess regardless. So Bring Fido has been super, super helpful. So let's check it out. So what's great about Bring Fido is it acts almost like a hotels.com. And there's been a few cases on this trip where we've actually wanted to stay at a hotel. Uh, before we had the van and now on this trip. So if I were to search for a hotel, we're gonna just choose Destin, Florida because that is where we are. Oops, go back here. Destin, Florida, it's fetching, it's waiting, <laughs> it's pretty cute. Um, and my, one of my favorite things about this is that it actually rates hotels by bones. So the more bones you have, the more happy your pet's gonna be, which I think is great. So. We look here, um, this is basically just sorting by the hotels in the area that are actually pet friendly, which sounds so simple, but man, is it like it relieves so much stress when you don't have to worry about that showing up to a hotel. And for those of you that don't know, we travel with our cat in the van, so this has been very, very helpful. So let's go into the Residence Inn. Let's check that one out, because it has five bones, why not? So we click here, and it'll give you reviews. So those bones are just reviews and um, we're gonna go down here. It'll give you a Bring Fido rate, a Booking.com rate. It'll kind of compare all the hotels for you. And then it'll act as your, your standard Expedia or Hotels.com app. And we have all the reviews at the bottom. A lot of the reviews really pertain to having a pet. Um, and if you don't see a pet fee, the reviews might say it. In this case, you wanna check to see if there's a pet fee on top of what the hotel fee is. So it'll tell you right here, Residence Inn has an additional fee of $100 per pet, um, any size. So both dogs and cats are permitted. $100 is a little bit steep. Typically you can find a hotel that's free or like $25. So that's just our personal opinion, especially if you're gonna spend $100 a night for a hotel and then pay another 100 for a pet. You know, you gotta really love your pet. Um, but it's just a helpful part of that app that'll really make your experience a lot more easy and, and a lot less stressful when you show up with your dog or cat or hamster or rabbit or whatever pet you have. 
One of the best parts about this app uh, is that you can actually book straight through it. So if we were going to book, let's go to Summer Place Inn instead and see if they have a pet fee. So that fee is $75 per pet. Let's pretend we're okay with that, even though we're not. And you can actually book right through the app. So like I said, it acts like your standard. It actually is a better app, I think, in, than an Expedia or Hotels.com. We can select a king standard room. It says two guests max, pet fee additional. They'll let you know that. Select and boom you are on your way to booking yourself a pet-friendly hotel room. The last two apps we're gonna talk about, you're gonna get a double for one deal here. We're talking about Campendium and The Dirt. These apps are really great for finding campsites that are either on the beaten path or off the beaten path and even what we like to call boondocking. For those of you that don't know what boondocking is, it's basically where you get to stay for free on public land or even private land and not have to worry about the camp fees, but also try to make sure to leave no trace. That's very important when boondocking. So let's dive into these apps. They're pretty self-explanatory, but I wanna quickly show you guys what we have here. So here I am inside Campendium and you can see it's showing my current location right now. And if we zoom in here, you can see all these different campsites in the area. Now, if you remember from road trippers, we were able to look at a lot of campsites in the area, but that's mostly going to give you commercialized campsites. What this app is really good for is for finding those free campsites that you might not be able to find on other apps. So in this case, we are in Florida, we are in a pretty commercial area, so you're not gonna really be able to find that but you can zoom in and you can check out all the different campsites you can read reviews about them you can see photos and then by the green means a state park usually and the little blue trailer means a RV park so you can check all of them out but let's just zoom out and you can go all the way to the full map if you zoom or you can of course type in the location let's zoom in over here to somewhere like Arizona and search this area. So we got Monument Valley here, and let's see, you can click this P, and that means a parking area. So look, we got Wagon Wheel Rest Area, not many good reviews, but it is free. So you can find lots of free campsites just by doing a search of the area that you're in. Let's zoom in here search this area i'm just zooming into a random place and now that we're in a national forest i bet a lot more of these will be free look we got pole creek not very good reviews but you can just kind of click around especially in national forest and especially in blm land to find free campsites we also want to show you guys the dirt so i'm just going to swipe out of this enter into the dirt it's very, very similar in terms of the interface, finding reviews and being able to click on the campsites and check it out, swipe up and just kind of see what it's all about, look at reviews, look at photos, but that sometimes they vary a little bit. So depending on the area you're in, you might wanna look at both apps because I've found that in a lot of the free areas we've been in, the dirt actually doesn't show it, but then Camp Pendium does and vice versa. So then a little bonus for you guys, I wanna show you one more app here and that is called iOverlander. And this is really awesome. When it opens up, it goes to the main menu. You can click map and you can zoom out or zoom in here. And again, it's gonna show you some campsites. Um, it's gonna give you not as many reviews, but you can still click info and kind of check it out quickly to see what it has. This one showing, okay, you have yes electric, yes hot water, yes potable water, no water, Wi-Fi, no restaurants. So it's gonna give you those basic things, pretty much tell you how much it's gonna cost and maybe a few reviews. What we really love about this app is it's also gonna show you places around the country to get water. So you can click on that. It's gonna show you where there's potable water. And then it's gonna also show you dump stations, showers, all sorts of things, and even show you parking lots that you can camp in for free, such as Walmart, one of our favorites. Um, so let's see if we zoom into this area. Let's see, we're showing some water here. Okay, we got a propane fill-up station. So this app is really great for anybody on the road that needs to know where to stay for the night, maybe just a free spot to park for the evening and where to get some fresh water, propane, and showers. All right, guys, so we don't have a proper studio. We're losing a little bit of light. This Florida... It's definitely getting dark. <laughs> <laughs> the Florida sun is coming down quick. 
but those were the five apps that we actually use on a regular basis living in the van full time like they are on our phones constantly and i feel like road trippers yeah road trippers and campendium in the dirt i've been looking on those every single night to find a place to stay for the night whether it be paid or free or whatever you know those are the the two i guess we use the most right and road trippers honestly planned this yeah. whole trip <laughs> yeah like like we were able to map everything out see how much money we're spending on gas yeah. kind of check our mileage so that was really helpful yeah like minus our road atlas i think that oh yeah had, the road atlas <laughs> we didn't really talk about that but that'll be a separate video like that this is just the app video when there's service ideally um, when there's not this video doesn't really work I guess yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway we hope you guys enjoyed this video like we said it was a while since we brought you something and we really hope to continue to to make these a weekly occurrence um, we've learned a lot over the last two months on the road so tons of advice and tons of uh, tips coming your way soon yeah we really want to share with you guys how these past few months have been and like living in the van and do an updated van tour and uh, just kind of try to be more consistent I guess we, we've been so busy and I know you all understand so see you guys on the road what's up everybody I don't like that oh and she spilled it all what's up world how you guys doing it has been a little while. Hold for ambulance. What is the matter with you? My eyes keep like water. Uh, so today we are choosing, today we're choosing, today, what is my saying? No, I interrupt. You do that, okay. What's up guys? We are here in Destin, Florida at Henderson Beach State Park. <laughs> what? What else is this? supposed to say? Today we are in Destin, Florida. Hold for that. <laughs> what can happen now?